low cost passive investment is gaining traction and after equity funds now we have innovative offerings in debt investment space also so today we have got radhika gupta she is ceo edelweiss amc and she has successfully managed bharat bond etfs two tranches of bharat bond etfs and now she is back with another innovative offering in the debt investment space and which is nifty psu bond plus stl index fund 2026 so radhika first of all uh, what the product is about just decode the product name itself yeah the name is a long one <laughs> but actually you know the good thing is that this product is so simple that if you just decode the name you understand most of the product so uh, let me just start with the name uh, the last part of the name is index fund so this is an index fund um, which means it is a passively managed product it is benchmarked to an index and the reason it's got the word nifty in it even though it's not equity is nse is doing the index so it is a passive fund so the fund manager doesn't take a call there is an index and it's benchmarked to an index and the second okay. thing in the product is that it is 2026 as you said so it is a target maturity index fund so it is holding bonds that mature in 2026 what this means for an investor is that if you're investing for a 5 year horizon we are just buying bonds that mature around april 2026 and you as an investor basically if you stay for the holding period will earn the returns of the bond over these 5 years and then finally um the initial part of the product was psu plus sdl that represents the constituents of the fund so the fund is 50% triple a public sector bonds and which is similar to bharat bond in some way and second half is state development loans um some people may not be as familiar with the sdl terminology everyone is familiar with gsex that's the government borrowing state development loans represent an rbi backed program of sovereign securities so these are sovereign securities but it is borrowing of individual states so again to summarize it's a portfolio of 50% triple a psus 50% state development loans packaged in the target maturity format which people liked in bharat bond this product is a 5 year product maturing in 2026 and it is in index fund so the index has about 20 to 21 odd psu and sdl names that are packaged together and uh, why are we calling it india's first uh, debt index fund because if we compare it with bharat bond etf then how is it different because in bharat bond etf you had fund of fund offering also so why is it a first debt index fund so there are three kind of offerings that you can have um there is the etf offering and an etf whether equity or debt is something that is traded on the exchange where you necessarily need a demat account that was bharat bond etf uh, and because the requirement of that program was that you need to do an etf it was an etf however when we did bharat bond we also realized that a lot of retail investors and in fact even hni investors prefer the mutual fund kind of way of investing where they don't want to transact on the exchange they don't want to open a uh, demat account just for the sake of bond investing in equity investing you still might but in bond investing you may not so we created a fund of fund vehicle a fund of fund vehicle is basically something that buys an umbrella in india here when we wanted to launch this we had the option of doing etf plus fund of fund but we said you know the most popular format seems to be the index fund in fact recall when we did our first equity passive offering recently uh, with msci we chose to do the index fund format very well received and we thought this would uh, work i think we think that in passive index funds can be a very popular format and we intend to build a suite of these index funds and yes it is uh, unfortunately for some reason uh, nothing has come out in index fund format so this happens to be the first one all right and uh, simplify the concept of target maturity so this okay. fund is based on target maturity simplify it for viewers okay so the simplest way to think about a target maturity fund is just holding a bond when i buy a bond of pfc or nhai i buy the bond for 100 rupees principal and i buy it for 5 years and if i hold the bond till maturity i will get my 100 rupees principal back and say the rate of interest was 7% i'll get 7% a year so 7% times 5 is about 35 rupees of coupon plus some accrual etc plus 100 rupees i'll get 135 rupees at the end of the year is period may if 
bond interest rates move up interest rates move down rbi does this inflation does that it doesn't matter because for a whole to maturity investor i'm buying a bond and holding it till maturity i think that's a construct we uh, understand it is very similar to my fd experience right if i do an fd for 5 years at 6% I know that at the end of five years, I'll get my principal plus six percent for five years. A target maturity fund has the same notion. Rather than buying one bond, it just buys a collection of bonds and holds them to maturity. How is this different from a mutual fund? You might ask. A mutual fund is constantly buying and trading bonds, and a mutual fund holds an active amount of duration. So, a mutual fund product like a corporate bond fund will always have a maturity of three four years. a target maturity product is like a boy rolling down a hill um you start and you have a maturity of 5 years in 2022 it becomes 4 years in 2023 it becomes 3 years in 2 years in 1 year and then it matures and at the end of the day you get your money back it's probably the closest mirror to an fd or bond in terms of experience in a mutual fund format and the reason it matters to investors actually is because it's the one product where you don't need to worry about duration risk if you are a whole to maturity investor okay and uh, when retail investors in uh, invest in any product then they look for safety liquidity at returns of course so how is it placed on these fronts so i think in terms of safety it stacks very very highly there are two risks in fixed income uh, there is credit risk and there is duration risk duration risk if you are a hold to maturity investor as i talked about goes away completely i will caution though this is not a one month or a three month or a one year product uh, over one year because of the duration you will see fluctuations this is not a liquid fund substitute or a short term fund in nature it is a 3 to 5 year investment because over 3 to 5 years you're likely to earn the yield over 5 years you'll definitely earn the yield and over 3 years also the impact of duration won't be high in terms of credit risk we've all heard about credit risk i think this is as good as you can get on credit risk half the portfolio is sovereign which is sdl and half the portfolio is triple apsu so i think you're clean there it is a liquid product the underlying securities are very very liquid uh, you can enter and exit at any time one of the reasons we chose to keep a basket of psu plus sdl not only sdl by the way is it gives a very nice liquidity profile we have done extensive work on psu bonds with bharat bond we are the largest players in this segment we know how liquid that market is we manage liquidity conditions so we think this works really well there um and then finally returns i think the good thing about the target maturity structure is there is predictability of returns for instance the index yield on this product right now is somewhere between 6.35 and 6.4 as i said again if you are a whole to maturity investor you are likely to realize something close to that but post tax i believe five around just above 5% no post tax around 5.9 so a little under 6% and okay. just to give you the sort of tax story um this has the benefit of indexation so if you hold for more than 3 years you pay 20% above the rate of inflation so if you earn 6.3% minus 4% on the 2.3% you pay 20% tax which is about 40 basis points a year which is why that 5.9 number is coming in a traditional instrument that return would be closer to i think 3.8 or 4 that's illustrated in our presentation so there is a significant delta toward traditional investment 